Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, we're going to take a look at the F-22, Jared Oser's new knife, uh, a new Kaiser line focuses on specialized materials, and then you're called to a duel. What do you bring? Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was on last week's supplemental when we were talking about war clubs. And this is from Byron Kennedy. He says, the woods was great. Playing, hide and seek, building forts, capture the flag, setting snares and booby traps, and fabricating weapons. I found the most unique vine slash branch with a peculiar growth one day while playing. The immediate survival set, uh, instinct set in, and I knew this needed to become my war club. Now over 50 plus years old, plus whatever age the tree was in Canada, this war club hangs in our corner guest room as a reminder of both a great childhood memory and the strong genetic survival instinct in each and every boy slash man, okay, human. I thought this apropos during this Thanksgiving season, this hobby of ours, and this episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you, Byron Kennedy. That is, um, I love that little uh, uh, personal tidbit. That's kind of what this is all about. Like, uh, we have the knives that we love and that end up staying in our collection. The knives are the, the items like war clubs, these kind of things that fall within our hobby. And some we let go, but some we keep because of the memories they maintain or because of um, the memories they must have that you don't know about, the mystery. Uh, so, But it is all about memories. Uh, so there you go. That That's my take as a sentimental uh, middle-aged Italian-American man. Byron Kennedy, thank you so much for always commenting, but this comment in particular uh, was great. All right. I think it's time that we get right now to a pocket check. Today on me, I had the off-grid knives stinger. This beauty is a beast. Oh, that sounded corny, but it really is. It is both beautiful and beastly. It's a, it, it is the most refined off-grid knives uh, design so far, in my humble opinion, uh, due to the the ergonomics, uh, the contouring of the handle. Uh, it's it's very well considered, and um, if you look at it from this aspect, it is. Uh, nicely rounded out nicely contoured and that makes all the difference now uh they uh, off-grid knives is known for their hard use knives and some of them uh there's one in particular uh you really want to use gloves with in in my humble opinion the xl uh explorer this is on the opposite end it is it is uh, nicely contoured and smooth it is great for everyday carry this is not going to gnarl up your pocket at all you've got a beautiful deep carry pocket clip and a nice broad four inch blade four inches is my wheelhouse exactly it's my favorite uh this is 14 uh, 154 cm uh, crucible so i think that means it's uh regular 154 cm but it's made uh, by crucible steel beautiful beautiful action on this uh so off-grid knives makes has knives made by best tech and by a manufacturer in Taiwan. This is made from in their Taiwan manufacturer. And you know me, I love Best Tech, but whoever this Taiwan manufacturer is, is killing it also. This, this is a just a really great, well-made knife. And you know what? I didn't use it for anything today, but I did have it in my front right pocket. And it made me feel good, and it made me feel secure. And I pulled it out, and I used it, or flipped it from time to time to remind me that it was there. Uh, but just a great, great knife. This is a knife. This is a great Christmas knife. I'm going to say it. It's a great Christmas knife uh, because uh, for those uh, knife lovers who like the three and a quarter inch, that's their wheelhouse. This is a good big knife for them to have. Everyone needs a big knife. And for those who like to carry a four inch blade or a three and a half, you know, something a little bit larger. Well, this is this is a dream in the pocket. So uh, awesome, awesome knife. Also very, very sharp. Uh, interestingly, though, uh, with that, uh, with that saber grind, it is 
you know, it is wickedly, wickedly sharp and thin behind the edge. But the other knives from off grid that have full height hollow grinds and similar uh, blade stock are, are even, even sharper and more paper thin behind the edge. Just a great knife company. I love off grid knives. Uh, we do have a, um, a, a uh, affiliate link uh, that Jim just flew up on the screen. And uh, so if you like any of their knives, you might consider buying it that way. Helps the show. All right. So that's the off grid stinger. I was carrying. Uh, I also had in my pocket today uh, the Jack Wolf Knives Cyborg Jack. The season of the Cyborg Jack is coming to a close, and the season of the Venom Jack is uh, is just beginning. We'll get we'll get to that later, but I don't mean that the season of this is closing. But you know, this is no longer the brand new Jack Wolf knife, and um, you know when when this first run is complete and uh, I have the full complement. Uh, you know, towards the end of each month, I start gravitating towards older Jack Wolf knives because I've had this, uh, you know, in my pocket for a while. And I'm like, yeah, let's let's remember some of the other great knives. But anyway, this this Cyborg Jack is really cool. It's such an original design with the with the faceted sort of angular handle. It's I guess not faceted angular handle in that profile um, in the in the beautiful clip point blade it m reminds me of a benny's clip but a fully a uh, full height hollow ground benny's clip you know benny's clip always has a flat and sort of a saber grind to it this knife i did use on me this cut a bagel and wow did it do it great you know i could have used any one of the five dollar knives in my work kitchen uh, but i chose this and and man it vanquished that bagel uh, I love that thing. I don't mean to make light of it, but I just don't, uh, you know, I don't have a job where I need to cut stuff, unfortunately. Uh, okay, next up uh, on my belt or, you know, in, in the waistband carry, I had the Revere by 1558 Knives. Uh, this is Josh Fisher, a master smith. This is one of his uh, uh, sort of mid-tech or, you know, one of the knives that he has um, that he makes more of than his than his, uh, than his customs, obviously. Uh, I got this at Blade Show 2022. This was, I think, one of like two or three purchases. I did not buy much this year. Such a great knife. A lot of people look at this and ask if it's a, a Winkler. But then again, I've been noticing a lot of people look at a lot of fixed blades uh, that I have and ask if they're Winklers. And so I think people just have a general idea that medium fixed blade looks somewhat handmade. Uh, Winkler, but uh, to me, this doesn't look really much like a Winkler at all. I guess maybe the long clip might, uh, but I love the recurve on this 5160, I think Blade Steel this is, and my Carta handle. Very um, slender carry, which I like. That's almost a prerequisite at this point, with a few exceptions uh, for carry for me, is a smooth handle, again, with uh, with some exceptions i did carry my uh coban this week and it worked great against clothes and stuff but smooth handle here it's slender and then you've got coke bottle contouring and it just fits so great it's so good in the hand uh this i used to cut jute twine because i was wrapping um putting a little tiny wrap on the handle of my war club which i'll show you later my thumper okay uh and then lastly, on me, I, I wait, did I have anything else? No, I think that was it. <laughs> that was it. I mean, I have all these other knives in front of me that I've been playing with. Actually, I've been using this, uh, this um, rediscovered my Benchmade bug out and have been uh, flipping it all day long. Love that thing. So this is what I had in my pocket. You let me know what you were carrying today. Uh, I had the 5158 Revere. I had the uh, uh, off-grid knives, Cyborg Jack, and the Stinger from uh off-grid knives i said off-grid for this this is the jack wolf knives cyborg jack this is the off-grid stinger uh all great knives and i realize as i look at them um all from interesting people i had a good uh conversation with josh fisher who made this knife so all these interesting people making all these beautiful knives that's what this show is all about all right speaking of which uh, another friend of the show someone i'd like to have back on and uh we are working on that is jared oser and uh man he is he is the consummate uh, slip joint 
maker, custom maker, and inventor. You know, I was talking about how inventive the handle is on this Jack Wolf Knife Cyborg Jack. Well, that's the kind of stuff that Jared Oser does. Uh, you should go back and check out uh, the, the interview I did with him. A very interesting guy. And uh, he has been going into uh, modern uh, style knives. And this is his F22 uh, Kickstop in M390. This is a beauty. This is on loan to me from uh, uh, 50, uh, Mr. VC256, a, a great uh, fan of the show and patron of the show and just a great guy. And he had this, sorry, it's really snugly in this box. He had this drop shipped to me so I could check it out and I'm going to send it along to him. And wow, is it impressive. Holy mackerel. So uh, just looking at it, you can see some signature uh, Oster. Uh, well, you have a badge there, which is very evocative of slip joints and traditional style knives. You have this really beautifully contoured uh, canvas, black canvas micarta, and a sculpted titanium clip. And look at that flipper tab. Hey, where'd it go? Where'd the flipper tab go? It's a kickstop. Uh, Lee Williams kickstop uh, is the is the mechanism used here as the flipper and just a really great sort of setup here with the flipper tab. And then when you let it go, the flipper tab disappears inside and you have a very nice uh, profile. That's not, that's not uh, um, messed up by the flipper tab there. And then at the base of the blade, you have a really nice sharpening choil. You will be able to sharpen this uh, blade for quite a long time. Though it is flat ground, it is very thinly ground, and you'll be able to uh, have a long life on this M390 blade. Not that you're going to have to, most likely, unless this is, the, this is your only knife and you're going to hard use it for work. You probably won't have to sharpen to the top of that notch, but I love the shape of it. And I love that you have the option to keep sharpening. I like this badge. I like the beautiful shape of that badge and how it fits so nicely in. Uh, it's like a bolster lock, liner lock. I, it's kind of hard to describe what this is. I guess a liner lock with an exposed bolster because it's titanium and you have the uh, and you have the steel interface in there. So, man, what a beautiful knife! Uh, check out Jared Oser's work if you. If you haven't, it, it is exquisite, and he's got a number of different uh, A collaborations and and uh, B um, OEM'd knives. So here it is. Uh, thank you, Mr. VC256. like checking this out. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, before we get to uh, knife news, I wanted to show off the knife we're going to be uh, giving away as our Gentleman Junkie Knife. Uh, for the month of December. It is a QSP. It has been donated to the channel by uh, Dave, this old sword blade reviews. Man, generous guy, because this is a really cool knife. This is the way it comes with this nice magnetic box in this spec card. And it's in this, uh, it's encased in velvet. Isn't that lovely? And uh, I have this box. And I have gotten to the stage where packaging does matter to me. Uh, this is a butte. It's called the Locust. Look at it. This looks like the thorax of a locust, does it not? Uh, with all of the milling and the actual the shape of that uh, tail section. And then you flip it open, and you've got this beautiful Warncliffe blade. This is a nearly four-inch, yeah, nearly four-inch blade. Uh, very, very sharp. Uh, this is VG10, and I love uh, the grind lines on this. The grind lines and that. Uh, uh, sort of half and half with the coating on the flats and that nice satin on the uh, bevel. So this is the Gentleman Junkie Knife giveaway knife for the month of December 2022. Sweet action on this, by the way, which is a hallmark of QSP. Uh, you'll see that on well all the knives I have by QSP, which are starting to number uh, high, <laughs> uh, work very well. Have this awesome action. All right, so that is what we will be giving away this month. Thank you, Patreon members, uh, one and all. Whether you're a gentleman junkie, a traditional junkie, or a tactical junkie, your support is greatly appreciated.
All right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at a new line of knives from Ontario Knife Company and uh, a new line from Kaiser. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at theknifejunkie.com slash knives. That's theknifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Ontario Knife Company has been leaning into their Camp Plus lineup. Uh, it is a lineup, as you might guess, of camp knives. It started off uh, fixed blades, and then last year they released uh, two knives uh, that uh, for basically camp kitchen knives, big folders. Uh, I know a number of you had them. They're lockbacks with FRN handles, kind of an institutional green color. Uh, <clears throat> looked very cool, and I've heard good things about them. Well, Ontario Knife Company now has a uh, addition to those, which I have to say, remind me a little bit of the Broken Skull by Cold Steel uh, in a good way, or or that kind of knife, or a Delica, something like that. So it's a it's an FRN handled um, three and a quarter inch OS eight clip point blade, and it is a lockback. But it but like the um, Buck One Ten or One Twelve, this is uh, requires both hands to open. This is not a uh, thumb stud knife this is a, not a flipper this is a two-hand opener lockback and something about that is absolutely charming to me um, I think these look like very good looking knives they're going to be inexpensive and we're not sure when they're going to be released but um, I don't know I think I might like to have one I like the thundercloud uh, blue on top and it's always cool to have white and black knife though the one white and black knife I have never gets used because I'm afraid of dingying up the white you know evidence of my hands needing to be washed or something like that but these uh clip points are a really nice bellied knives they're sort of the straights are downward raked and then you have a nice belly down towards the tip so just a great looking knife to me it does kind of look cold steelish um and uh oh and also you have that nice spot just behind the ricasso uh to grip to choke up so this looks like a great utility knife. I think it'll fit nicely into that camp lineup. It's inexpensive, FRN and OS8, you know, just a functional little tool. But I like the look of it, so I might have to get one. Uh, next up from Kaiser, uh, uh, an, always a category of I might have to get one. I just, man, I love their knives. And I just gave one to my brother. Uh, I gave him my Big Lighter XL when he was in the hospital. I think I'll keep mentioning that so so that I so that my aura at my 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 halo grows because as i was doing it i'm like look at you bob you're such a big man handing over this knife that you love i'm like it's going over your brother people mistake you for twins it's it's practically still in your own pocket so uh i'm glad it's there anyway kaiser has a new lineup uh and pretty cool evocative of a guest we had on this show the work of uh you, you know you know who i'm talking about um uh the mike uh uh, G Carta, the the work of G Carta, that that beautiful uh, the the Serape G L Hansen and Sons. I'm sorry, I had forgotten his name, uh, but the maker of G Carta does these beautiful uh, Mexican blanket style uh, handle scales as well as others. Well, um, recognizing the popularity of that look and that beautiful color combination, Kaiser has jumped in to the fray, and they are not producing uh, the G L Hansen and Son G Carta style. Uh, handle that is just colored g10 but still you get that serape look the serape is the mexican blanket that has been used as a cover or a, uh, a shawl or you know uh very very popular pattern well here it is in a new lineup they're gonna do four knives in it i believe this the one that we see here uh that is the what is that called that's the one that that what is that i'm a mess with this it's the it's uh, I don't remember what it's called, but they're doing the uh, the Big Lighter XL, the original. That's what it's called, the original, and the uh, and the Kauser Towser K with this one, and then they're going and doing some Fat Carbon series too. And with that one, it will be the original, the Drop Bear, the Hiccup, and the Big Lighter too, um, dressed up in that in that uh, Fat Carbon. 
But the interesting thing is, is that the fat carbon lineup will get a nicer blade steel. It's going to get M390, whereas the Serape maintains the steel that that knife in particular uh, carried. It, they're just changing the scales and coating the blade. So you get a nice contrast between the black blade and the beautiful Serape pattern. It also comes with that little dog tag you see in that picture and a lanyard bead. Kind of cool. Uh, we'll have to see what it's going to cost. Uh, but I like the additional little, uh, the lanyard bead in the, in the thing. Kind of kind of a nice little addition. All right, that's to come from Kaiser Knives. To come here on Knife Junkie Podcast, we're going to take a look at the state of the collection. I got quite a couple of uh, cool things to show off. And then, um, so you've been challenged to a duel. We're going to take a look at some dedicated fighters. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, the star of uh, some recent YouTube shorts. Uh, I have to show it off here on this show. This is the Natchez Bowie. Uh, this is the Bowie I've been talking about for oh so very long, waiting for it to come out in an affordable version. Uh, they just recently released the Natchez Bowie. This is cold steel if you've been under a rock and haven't been listening to my to my goings on about it. Uh, it is um, uh, originally re-released in 3V a couple of months ago to the tune of like 500 bucks MSRP. It was showing up on all the sites for 399. I just, I, you know, I just can't. I, 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 I've, I've spent that on knives, uh, but they've been either customs or, or very high end folders for me, very high end. I, I'm just not spending that kind of money on, on knives on the whole these days. I should say these days, uh, but this notch as Bowie, they finally came out with a 4034 version of it. And yes, 4034 stainless steel is, is clearly inferior to three V, but I don't plan on having any wood chopping contests with anyone uh, who has the notch as three V. I will, I will bow out of any such uh, challenge. Uh, I will stick with this 3034 because I got this for fighting. This is my, <laughs> No, but this is a dedicated fighter. It's a cable tang knife. Uh, that cable tang in there absorbs a lot of shock uh, that you might receive on that blade. But it is not a woods blade. This is not something that I'm going to be taking outside. I might take it outside just for fun. But it's not something I'm going to be making kindling with and batoning with and all of that. So I don't need or want the 3V. To me, 3V is a great blade steel, but it it, it would deserve a, a full tang. If you're making a giant blade out of 3V, you, you're sort of implying that it's going to take a lot of shock, meaning you're going to be hitting it on wood. You're going to be doing a lot of wood processing and chopping with it. Well, in that case, I would want a full tang. So I made the right choice. Uh, this is vastly less expensive than the, the 3V, and it's still just as cool. And for my purposes, which is to just have, you know, and use on occasion just for fun, uh, 3034 stainless steel is just fine. I don't get the 3V feel, that warm feel you get knowing you have a superior steel that you'll never uh, push to its limit. Uh, but I will have the the warm cozies of uh, the warm fuzzies of knowing I have a Natchez Bowie, which is so cool. Unfortunately, it comes in this great sheath. Uh, it, it is a great sheath, this, uh, um, what do they call it, Securex. But I wanted the old school leather black leather with the stud that sticks out so you can put it in your belt they just don't haven't made that in years and they don't have that but uh you can find it on ebay for a cool 700 bucks all right so that is the Natchez bowie by cold steel finally i can i can end this bowie obsession for a little while and move on and obsess about something else like war clubs uh speaking of war clubs here is the new thumper from my friend Zach at Wingard Wearables. Look at this thing. He, from the fertile mind that brought you the back ripper, this nice, light, fighting tomahawk. That's what this is. It's a fighting tomahawk. It's not for door breaching. It's not for uh, wood processing. It's for, well, it's called the back ripper. So it's for 
trapping, ripping, chopping, and defending yourself. This is another one that is, this is a weapon here, and it is based on the Northeast uh, in, uh, Northeast Woodland style uh, ball war club. Um, and we were talking about this on the podcast we recorded a couple of weeks ago, uh, Zach and I, and, and I very, very brilliantly um, uh, hypothesized that this style war club uh, that usually has a ball, this is flat and we'll talk about that in a second, usually has a ball here, it looks like the the femur and the and the hip joint. And I was wondering if maybe that was the original um, inspirer of, of such a war club. But anyway, I thought that was an interesting thought. Uh, he thought it was marginally interesting and no one else has responded. So I'm just going to let it drop right there. But I wanted to go on the record with it. Uh, so based on the hip joint, as uh, famous anthropologists have surmised, uh, the the ball war club is a very very effective weight forward uh, sort of uh, bludgeon, and it's used in a melee uh, and 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 also in one on one combat to great effect with this sort of thing here. Uh, you will see these uh, ball war clubs with a spike or or just a flat rod coming out, and what that is for. Um, you the secondarily you will get a puncture and you will get whatever damage you get from from the spike or that um, or that rod breaching whatever it's breaching. Uh, but really, it's there to keep all of the energy on target. Uh, it's easy uh, to glance off of something, especially if it's rounded like a head or a helmet. Uh, you have a rounded thing and you're hitting something round. It's easy for that force to glance off. Um but you add a little spike or this little thing or like the knurling on a roofing hammer or the knurling on a war hammer. Uh, that knurling is there to keep to bite into the surface of the target and keep all of the force moving in the proper direction into the target. So it's not so much about the puncture. It's more about keeping all of the force going where it needs to go focused. So a, a really cool innovation and idea because i always just assumed it was for poking holes um it, on, on this wingard wearable now let's talk about this this is flat because uh as per the name wearable this is meant to be carried on the person so it, if it were two three if it were too much in the three dimension like round ball it would not be doable so uh this is a collaboration and uh with a gentleman who makes war clubs and uh, they came up with this flat design, maintaining the weight and the shape up here and putting that steel rod that goes to about here. So it buries very deeply in there. And you get this amazing uh, and compact weapon. This uh, right here is the only sharp edge on this thing. And it's around the uh, edge of this um rod and it is very sharp it bites in for sure and uh and so it's hickory that is cut out with a cnc and then and then filed and hand hafted by uh by zach himself now i'm last night actually put this uh this has been my nighttime uh, dog walking stick and uh as i was fussing around with it last night and practicing pulling it out of the belt and uh, I found that I needed an index spot, so I knew when I was coming to the edge, the end of the handle, which is also faceted for poking. Um, I I also wanted something uh, a little more positive grip because it's a a tapering, um, it's a tapering surface uh, towards the end. So I put this jute twine on there. I'm gonna probably gently shellac it, um, but it really helps uh, not only in grip. But in, if you're pulling it out of the belt and, and trying to find where your hand needs to stop, it's great for that too. And if you make impact, it will, it will keep it from sliding out. So that is my Wingard Wearables Thumper War Club. Uh, if you've ever looked at Wingard Wearables, they're not inexpensive uh, because they are handmade. Uh, but these are, are by far the, you know, the least expensive of the hafted weapons. You know, the Tomahawks cost more. Uh, He's got a bunch of them. I know he's selling them for Christmas. Uh, if you're interested or if there's a War Club fan on your list, go to WingardWearables.com, I think it must be, and check out the Thumper. It's so cool. All right, setting this aside over here. Uh, next up, the new Jack Wolf Knives. 
knife for December 22, and that is the Venom Jack. And I got this beautiful carbon fiber. What are they calling this? This is camo carbon Timascus. And uh, usually I think of camo, I think of greens. This has a lot of blues in it. Uh, just beautiful carbon fiber. And, and you really get a lot of character uh, coming out of that material with the contouring of the handle. You know, it reveals patterns. It's beautiful. Look at that blue. This is my first of the fat carbons in this kind of style. The camo carbons, I think they've been coming out in different colors, I think. Um, I've had some cool carbon fibers, but this is my first in this style, and it is stunning. Also stunning is that big, broad Warncliffe blade. Uh, so I'm going to tell you, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about this real quick. That is a broad Warncliffe blade, uh, but because of that tip, a uh, Ben Belkin designer calls this a Warncliffe and not a sheep's foot, even though it's got that that approach. It's got a, a sharper, more acute tip. It's got a downward raked straight edge, which I love. You know, I talk about that a lot. It just really captures material as you pull it through, acts as a sort of de facto recurve, uh, but much easier to sharpen for a lot of people who use flat stones. And then the handle is based on a, on a trapper and... Uh, um, you know, where you have a sway back and the handle comes up, a trapper kind of curves down. And man, this thing nestles in the palm beautifully. That's a three inch blade. So what is it like almost? Yes. Sorry, there are demarcations here. Yeah, it's like uh, seven and a half, seven and a quarter long. <laughs> You're like, there's a big difference, Bob. But I know I get stage fright when I have to measure. Uh, so, uh, you've got that perfect, perfect, uh, um, action, not action, but perfect, um, perfect smoothness across the top. You cannot feel the seam where that blade meets the, the, uh, lock and you have just beautiful action. M390 blade steel. Uh, let me show this real quick. Every, uh, every Jack Wolf knives knife has the, the artwork this is the venom and as you can see maybe from this this is the this is the wolf wrestling this giant serpent well uh if any of you are conan the barbarian fans uh, this is the sticker and it says crom so he's crom uh, is uh is conan's god and uh he says crom like we say god sometimes and then of course what is best in life and uh, you all know what is best in life. It is not freedom of the open stuff, falcon at your breast, and the wind in your hair. It is indeed to crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentations of the women. So uh, I love the theme of this knife, Conan the Barbarian, one of my favorite all-time movies. And uh, apparently Ben's, too. He comes up with some great, uh, some great movie references in his things so beautiful knife i haven't even carried it yet i just opened it i look forward to bonding with this uh over the next long period of time and of course the nice pocket uh pocket carrier all right next up uh this is on loan from dirk pinkerton uh himself that sounds like i'm name dropping but he's a cool guy and i've I, I know him, so he sent this to me to check out. Uh, through Dave, this old sword blade reviews. Uh, Dave had this first, and uh, he I believe he did a review on it. I haven't seen, I haven't watched it yet. Um, but this is the um, inversion. You know the Kaiser inversion, Dirk Pinkerton designed. Uh, but this is his under his shingle with this ring that you can take on and off. And I am skeptical of ringed anything these days, even though I like them. I love karambits, and I love my shower ring dagger. And I, I do like ringed things. I just feel like I might break my finger if I used them because oftentimes I don't find the rings ergonomically placed. Well, in this case, I am wrong. Um, Dirk designed this right, put that right in the, in the absolute right place without having to do anything uh, to change your grip, you know, with your fingers. Sometimes you'll find the ring is high here. Here's, here's an example. Uh, you'll find that the ring is placed in such a way that you you have to sort of alter your grip to get your finger in there to me for this black rock knives i always use it like this i, I don't really use that ring uh, but it is good for removing the knife but if you want to use it in a in a 
in a um, usage sense, in the tactical sense, other than drawing it, that's how you mount it. So you don't, so almost more like a nuck than, than like the ring you see at the top of a karambit or dagger. So I think this is a very cool knife. I would like to get this. I have the, the Kaiser inversion. I love this design uh, because it does blend uh, beauty, just raw beauty with something interesting. It looks inverted and uh, with a great usage. Uh, it, this is a great self-defense knife, but it is also a great utility knife. Now, with the ring on it, it, it does add a little bit of an issue for using this knife, but uh, the, my Kaiser inversion, actually, you can just use it to the side, but my Kaiser inversion I like as a utility blade also. So that, that ring might get in your way a little bit for that purpose, but man, at, for its weapony purpose, I think that this ring adds value because uh, you have a small, you know, titanium handle and that might get slick when wet. So to have that ring, I don't know. I'm thinking I'm thinking it's a good thing and I really like this, but I'm going to dig into it and uh, watch for a, a close up video on this Kaiser inversion. I mean, Pinkerton inversion, ringed version inversion. OK, uh, next up and last in the state of the collection, got a lot of stuff in. This week, this is also from Dirk Pinkerton and also on loan, unfortunately. Uh, beautiful sheath. We'll start with the sheath because, man, that matters. Awesome sheath. But this is the Razorback from Dirk Pinkerton. This is a custom knife. This is a handmade knife. And uh, <laughs> it really shows off how exquisitely skilled he is at grinding. Look at that center ridge between hollow grinds here. And if you look back and forth, as I have, it is symmetrical. He nailed it exactly. This is a, an unsharpened swedge, but it's so close to sharp that all it would take is sending it back to Dirk and saying, put an edge on the top and, uh, and I'll take it. <laughs> uh, it is all it would take is if I wanted this to be my knife. So this is a uh, hollow grind and you can see it thicken up just a little bit towards the front, kind of as it takes this turn. Um, but it is a very, very acute thrusting point. Uh, so you do get a little bit of a little bit more strength because it remains a little beefy towards the tip. <laughs> Just a really cool knife. He uh, uh, Dirk uh, DM'd me. Sorry, <laughs> can't remember what the kid said. Say he DM'd me and said, uh, "I see you're in a Bowie phase. You want to check out the Razorback?" And I said, "Hell yes." And to me, this is not a Bowie or a clip point. To me, this is more of a um, more of an upswept, more of a Persian-y kind of knife, you know, if you need to define it, which you don't. But God, it is just beautiful. That handle is gorgeous. It feels perfect in hand. And it's just the right amount of handle to use it in reverse grip and have a perfect place to cap your thumb thumb dirk pinkerton i'm just gonna say right here is amazing his work is awesome because he's very prolific in the production folder world you can find a lot of different designs from him uh with some very uh signature looks and then others that you might not guess are his uh but a lot of knives in the production world but his man his custom stuff is just incredible and I find it uh, to be reasonably priced, I mean, for custom work and for such a big name and for such awesome designs. So check out Dirk Pinkerton <laughs> is all I'm saying. All right. So this would be a great knife for this next one. Uh, but since it's not mine, I figured I wouldn't put it in the list. But the idea is you've been called out to a duel and the, the weapon is knives. Now, I've been forced to listen to the musical Hamilton in the car. Uh, for quite a while now. Uh, I guess it's been four or five months. And at first I was very resistant. And, uh, you know, like water on rock, uh, I've begun to love some of the songs. Um, and my daughters know what to play uh, to keep me, um, to keep my buy-in while we're driving. And one of them is about dueling, the 10 dual commandments. And I was started to think, well, I, you know, the, the dueling concept has a romance to it. I read a whole book about dueling with swords. And, and I always thought about dueling with knives. What would that look like? Uh, so these are the knives that, uh, from my collection that if I were called out to a duel and they said, bring, bring a knife, these are the ones I would bring. 
All right, first up is a classic and kind of deserves this number one spot, though these aren't rank ordered. Um, but that is the Combat Stiletto by Randall Made Knives. This is the Model 2 7, 7 referring to the blade length. It's a seven inch dagger. And uh, why this dagger? Well, first of all, it's a dagger. You're going to see a number of them in this list. And like uh, the others in this list, this is a dagger that has belly. It has belly for slashing. And this also has two hollow ground bevels. So a very good cutter, very good slicer, slicer and slasher. But also look at that. Look at that tip. A tip made for thrusting. It's broad. You're going to leave a large opening with this. Uh, but you're also going to be able to punch in well because of that diamond tip. So uh, the reason I like the belly on a dagger is that I, when I'm John wicking it all alone doing my Carenza, Carenza is shadow boxing with a knife or, or sticks, uh, I find that I do a lot of slashing. And I know the Roman army would not approve, but I do a lot of slashing as well as thrusting. But I want my slashes to count because slashes count a lot less than, uh, than a stab, than a thrust. So I do want those slashes to count. So uh, I'm going to look to belly uh, to belly up. Also, a great guard on this, a great guard. When I do the thrusts, I have a very large brass guard here and a nicely contoured handle. Just a great knife overall and uh, set up for this kind of uh, grisly work. Okay, I'm going to put this back in the beautiful leather sheath. Look at that sheath. I'd like to have like a pair of shoes or a pair of boots that are like this with that white stitching. Very nice. Okay, next up, uh, a, a much newer game in town. This one is from Black Rock Knives. I showed it uh, off a few minutes ago. This is the Monkey Thumper. And this would be the more compact uh, thing that you have on you. Um, but it is uh, bred for fighting. Let's let's put it that way. Great sheath. Again, great sheath. I just changed the orientation of this um, loop. You kind of need it high because, because of this. Uh, the blade gets exposed early. But here is the blade. Beautifully done. Um, Ken Vahikite of Black Rock Knives makes some incredible weapony knives. Also camp and field knives. But he specializes in this kind of thing. Um, uh, he just recently did his version of a knuckle dagger that was just drool worthy. Uh, this is the Monkey Thumper, a Karambit style uh, fighter. You got, if you like the Karambit manipulation kind of things, you have a good ring here with flats. I do like the flats for arresting the motion. If it's flipping around, you can stop it quickly uh, by pinching down on the flats. Um, also, uh, I I tend to carry this knife and use this knife without the ring. And it's got a great pointed pommel for that. Now, if you choose to carry it in reverse grip and not use the ring, that pointed pommel is not a problem like pointed pommels usually are for capping the thumb because of its because of where that flat is. So this is a great, great little fighter. You've got the downward uh, angle of the handle like a bar of the blade to the knuckle like a barong. Uh, I mean, uh, like a kukri. And then on the back, I had them sharpen the swedge. It's a more obtuse. It's not a slicey edge. Uh, but uh, you get the gouging, tearing, slashing edge on the back. So, yeah, dual knife number two. Uh, this would be, if I'm, if I'm thinking I'm going to fight real close, uh, would be this. Uh, Black Rock Knives, Monkey Thumper. Next up, a new one from Tops, and has been uh, has been I'm getting a lot of carry from me. Um, is the Lacy Zabo designed Zabo Express? Also comes in a great sheath. This is a taco style sheath, so a little bit broader. Uh, also comes with their steel spring clip, which is pretty good. I like it a lot, except I kind of wish it didn't have this down here. Uh, a, a backward protruding hook on the top would make it easier to put take on uh to take off but anyway um this is the double edge version also comes in a single edge uh zabo express i call this a, a fighter rather than a dagger not that it matters but uh you can see it more when you turn it like this you can see that the bevels are uneven the top bevel is is shorter and so the and 
the edge slightly more obtuse. This is bigger and it has that curve and, uh, you know, the belly, the belly crests here and the belly crests here. So it gives it a curved look. So yeah, it's a fighter, um, as opposed to a dagger, which is symmetrical. You got this great guard here with the thumb ramp, uh, for saber grip and, and which is the nice thing about it is that the handle is just long enough for at least my hand and I think probably most people's hands to maintain that saber grip without running out of space down here. And uh, sometimes that can be a problem uh, because you cannot use this knife. You cannot choke up on this knife and use the Filipino grip. Even if you get this in uh, single edged, it's that swedge is going to be so thin. It's going to be uncomfortable to put any pressure on with your thumb. So you're, you're back here. You're kind of on the handle. You kind of have to be. And uh, so this is a great way to have this quillion pushed forward a little bit to accommodate the length of your thumb and then to have a longer spine with this shape back here works great. It also works great in the reverse grip, incidentally, but we'll, we'll get to that in a sec. Uh, down here, you have another guard just stopping you from riding up onto the handle, uh, onto the blade. This is 154 CM blade steel. Uh, Tops uses that a lot on their um, self-defense knives that are close to the body. And then, of course, you've got the red liners and the black um, textured micarta handle. This is great. This is a great knife. I carry this when I walk the dog sometimes at night. Uh, I will carry it uh, in CM style. So that means coming down like this. My belt is here and, and it's angled downward and I can just draw it. CM named after uh, CM FTW knife maker form. Rest in peace. Uh, that's how he would carry his knives. So yeah, that thing is vicious and, and for, uh, for a duel. I'm sorry, I just was talking about why for a duel it's got some nice reach and you will uh you will get to what you need to get to and you have uh reach at standoff distance but it's not too large that you're married to uh long range tactics ultimately ultimately i think that's what i like best though i'm thinking about the duel so i'm also thinking about standoff ranges like it's not something where someone jumps on you and you're defending your life, which you would always pretty much want something small because you'd be able to manipulate it in that tight space. Um, a good example of that is this next one. Um, so, you know, if <laughs> if the other guy's dueling with a Bowie, you're not going to choose this. Uh, but this would be a uh, great knife for that sort of close-in uh, portion of the duel. It is a double hollow ground, three and a half inch, push dagger this is an older one by cold steel this is the safe keeper 2 and it has this uh um rubberized grip it's a very nice grip it feels really good in the hand um i do know though that that on some of their later models they have snuck the rubber up the shaft uh, to to uh, make it more comfortable on the fingers and i can see why uh but this uh, handle portion is so big and and grippy that that it kind of doesn't doesn't come into play as much here as it does with the smaller uh, it doesn't come as much into play between the fingers as it does on some of the smaller push daggers uh yeah you get you get all of the strength of your punch with this and uh and it's deceptive and very difficult to disarm that's what i like about the the push dagger if you can hold a fist the shape of this in cross section will keep it from turning. It's sort of squared off, so it won't turn in your hand. If you can hold a fist and punch, uh, you can do a lot with this. But you can also swing and slash uh, uh, the the Filipino style of boxing, pan and tukan. Uh, this would be amazing with that with that style of boxing, any style of boxing. Uh, but uh, yeah, so this is the push dagger, um, and in this case, it is the the cold steel safekeeper. This is from when they first moved over to their kydex sheaths they did have this in a leather sheath if you can imagine that all right next up is actually fighter is in the name and this is was my first custom knife purchase this is the uh attention to detail mercantile medium folder uh this is a sheath that my brother made for it really nice sheath uh but here is the knife and man it's gorgeous uh i ordered this with the um uh with the tortoise shell handle, because to me, tortoise shell, 
I don't know. It's classy and it, it it's, uh, evokes a different time. And I don't know. I think that fits well on this bayonet style fighter. So this is S35 VN, hollow ground, very thin behind the edge on the main. Uh, and then this swedge is also hollow ground. And actually, that gives it a pretty nice edge, even though it's a not a very tall grind. It gives it a pretty sharp and nice edge because of the because it's hollow. Um, great balance, feels great in hand. I mean, this is this is no doubt that so it balances right by the the finger guard there or the secondary the choil. Um, really nice jimping, crowned spine, and just feels great in hand. I mean, you move this, it feels very light and lively in hand it's got the weight right in the right place to move that tip around really quickly and uh just a very very cool fighting knife so this this might be the one you bring out to to kind of look the classiest like maybe you're you're going you're kind of dressed up you're gussied up maybe you're you're going to this duel in a tux this might be the one you bring because that uh well that black blade next to that um tortoise shell just so yummy and then you got the brass liners so yeah, this might be the one. Or it could be this next one, which is a knife that I obsessed over for years and years and years and years and finally got recently and told you all about. Been showing it off a lot. The Cold Steel Taipan. This knife is an incredible. This would make an incredible dueling knife. <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll say that because it's got the, what I ordinarily don't like, pointy skull crusher. Ordinarily, I don't like a rubberized hand handle. It's got a long rubberized handle. Ordinarily, I don't like a long handle. But this gives you room for a full saber grip without running out of space. And that is kind of necessary on this double-edged knife because you cannot come up and put pressure on the back with a Filipino uh, grip like that. So 7-inch double ho uh, quadruple hollow ground blade. This one is very nicely done. I got one before this that was a lemon. It was sharpened by some ham-fisted dude who got a call from his girlfriend right at the moment he was completing the grind down here. Uh, but I returned it. That was an Amazon purchase. I don't really do that much anymore with the cold steels. I uh, got this in return, and it's beautiful. It is San Mai. You can see where the two different steels um, meet right there along the edge. Very sharp. Again, you've got the bellies on this and the hollow grinds, which will make, which will maximize the slashing you get out of this. Uh, the point is stout and sturdy, or as stout and sturdy as a dagger will, will likely get. Uh, maintains a lot of its thickness right to about here, and then tapers. Nice big guard that uh, comes out on the sides too. So if you're going to hold this in that sort of shovel grip. I'm not sure what they call this, but that flat grip, you have something to push against here. And then this, again, this long handle, if you do get tied up, boom, you've got, uh, you can really give this a nice hammer grip and sink your hands into that rubberized knurling and use this puño to, to, to disrupt, cause pain and do all that. So this would make an excellent dueling knife. Maybe not as, uh, as classy and good looking as the A2D with its tortoise shell, but very, very effective. And that's what you want. Really, you're not going out in this duel. It's not a fashion show. It's not a knife show. This is a, a fight for your life and your honor. So you might want to bring this because it might get close and nasty. And that is a Dirk Pinkerton knife. This is the Cave Bear. This is a custom that I saw across a crowded room at Blade Show 2021. And I swear to God, I was I was uh, George Costanza in an apartment fire pushing over old ladies to get to this knife. Uh, this is so exquisitely ground uh, because that's what we know uh, about Dirk Pinkerton. He not only designs a beautiful knife, but he can grind all day long and make these incredibly symmetrical quad. He does a lot of double-edged knives, a lot of quad ground blades and man so this this is set up <clears throat> for that pical style of fighting so uh, you might you might choose to go into this duel maybe the guy has a switch blade and you go in with this uh you're you're more than covered you you've got the gross motor motion of uh that the pical knife is is very good at but then you have the blade up front so if you're doing some more nuanced fighting like say you're using your collie and you're trapping 
with the back edge and you're slashing with the front edge and you're you're really maintaining your cool and you can do all that intricate stuff this would also uh, keep you in good stead if you choose to uh switch it up and go um and and go standard grip you have a really great downward bellied uh, you know uh, angled blade there for slashing and of course you have this awesome uh, back edge this would make a great dueling knife uh, for sure because it is very very well considered as all pinkerton knives are even the edc knives uh, for fighting also all right next up this dagger perhaps lacks the belly but is oh so fine this is the spartan harzy dagger designed by bill harzy jr and made in north carolina by <clears throat> the brilliant artisans at spartan blades and this gorgeous sheath made by um chattanooga leatherworks owned by rmj incidentally okay so this knife oh look at this it's a little bit shorter uh than the other daggers it's at a six inch blade um is wicked it is all piercing it is it, i mean so you will get some good slashing out of it because uh the edges are very very sharp and these are hollow ground even though the bevels are pretty thin they are deeply hollow ground so you will get you will get maximal slashing uh out of that blade shape as possible but really man this thing is a thruster you can see how it tapers only at the very tip how you get that medial ridge going all the way down the center, giving it rigidity. That's what you want in a thrusting knife is rigidity. Now you have the forward facing quillions, so you can, you can push off of them. Uh, you can, you know, they, they are fully there, uh, but unlike the, um, fully there, they're, they're full, fully forward. Unlike say a K bar, which rakes backwards, which I never understood. Uh, you got this nice voluptuous, uh, Coke bottle handle. I mean, voluptuous is the only thing, only way to describe this Rubenesque handle. Uh, you just kind of pinch it there, and you can get. You can do a lot of the uh, the um, <clears throat> Fairbairn Sykes kind of techniques, where they're they're pinching it and 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 holding it in certain grips. Uh, I'm I've seen videos on them, but I haven't uh, internalized that information. You have a noggin knocker back here that does not in any way uh, disrupt the the thumb cap though with this it is so contoured and though that guard is so nice and stout that you don't need to cap it i don't think you could you could totally get away with thrusting hard with a lot of energy downward in a reverse grip without capping the thumb all right so that is the uh the most beautiful and awesome spartan harzy dagger wearing leather from chattanooga okay second to last you know that this would not be complete without a bowie knife now you might think i was going to go for the old natchez bowie well it's not old my new natchez bowie uh but you'd be wrong because it's just a little too heavy and i would want to be nimble and quick uh so because it is not a dedicated fighter i did not choose the Trailmaster, which might actually take the place of this because it's even lighter and more nimble. But <clears throat> this one is a dedicated fighter, and that is the Laredo Bowie from Cold Steel. This is an old one, so I'm so glad I got this old one with the leather uh, leather sheath uh, back in my New York days. So that means this is about 15 years old or so. It's got a, I think this is A2 blade steel uh whatever it is it patinaed up nicely with a little bit of vinegar um, but this is a fighting bowie through and through it's long and slender uh, relatively speaking you know compared to some of the more uh camp style bowies slender uh, maintaining sort of parallel lines until the tip you've got a, a long sharpened swedge now i say sharpened because it doesn't have a cutting edge but it's a zero ground edge so it comes to a splitting tearing gouging back cutty edge and really that's all you need you don't even need that much to do damage with the back part of a bowie even a uh, um you know a flat swedge will really do some nasty damage on a back cut uh you've got a great coffin style handle i love coffin style handles because they're neutral uh, but they're also uh meant to stay in your hand as they flare towards the back um so even though this is wood, yeah, I used to have uh, spite, um, grip tape on here for years, 
And I recently took it off. It gunked up the design and it just didn't need to be there. You know, maybe if I actually were called to a duel, maybe out of an abundance of caution, I'd put grip tape there, um, but then remove it after the duel <laughs> because it doesn't, it's really not necessary. And it kind of uglifies this faux Coca Bolo wood. Uh, this thing has always had a split, but I never returned it. Cable Tang, awesome knife and light and lively. Light and lively for a 10 inch Bowie knife. All right, last up, I think you probably know what it is, uh, but maybe you don't. Anyone who's been watching me prevaricate probably uh, for the last year and a half knows what this is. Uh, but my ultimate dual knife is the Hogtooth Knives Subhilt Fighter. This was a gift from my mom and dad and uh, an amazing gift. Um, at, uh, my design and my input and uh, just beautifully executed. Thank you, mom and dad. So, and thank you, Matt Chase. This was a labor for him. But first, look at that beautiful corseted sheath. God, he does, his leather work is as good as his knife work, I, I gotta say. It's beautiful. But here's the knife. That's 1095 and 15 and 20. Very, very intricate pattern there. Long, slender fighter style clip point with fully sharpened top and bottom edge. Uh, sub hilt fighter. It's a Bob, Bob Loveless, originally a Bob Loveless design. Uh, I had him make the shorter quillions, and I love how he, uh, this is his thing here. He, his quillions are usually shaped something like that. And then this bottom sub hilt is faceted all the way around. It's so beautiful. Made from reclaimed uh, wrought iron from the Longfellow Bridge in Boston. That's black micarta, black micarta. And then here you have this beautiful stag. He bought that at Blade Show 2021. I bumped into him while he was searching for it. And man, I'd say he found it. Now the tang of the blade comes all the way down like this. And then the stag sits on a frame that has a cutout that fits onto the tang and then boom, 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 boom. It's like, oh, well, it's not bolted there actually. Uh, it's a very complicated handle. It's like 27 pieces or something. Um, <laughs> it was a bear. It was his very first sub hilt fighter. And uh, he, it was a good experience for all of us, but I think better for me. Uh, you get to maintain this incredible saber grip, um, but then you can also do a wonderful, uh, a very solid um, hammer grip like this. You get the sub hilt there so you can use it like a drumstick you can use it percussively you can use it to remove it from betwixt the ribs uh, where that blade has been lodged you know that's that's what this whole thing is for it's so that your hand doesn't slip off the knife if it does find purchase somewhere and uh just overall beautiful and big and sharp and impressive and uh built for the purpose so these have been my dueling knives uh, do you have any dueling knives or or have you ever thought about it? Have you ever considered it? It doesn't happen much this day and age, but uh, what if we go back to the other day and age and we do have to duel uh, and you're called out with a knife? I'm sure this is all fantasy. As a matter of fact, I know it is, uh, but it's a good uh, mind experiment. What would you what would you bring? <laughs> Let me know. And uh, you can leave that in the comment below. Uh, you might say, oh, I would bring my uh, I would bring my trail master or I would bring my Tonto. Just let me know down below. OK, uh, thanks for coming along on this uh, flight of fancy. It's been a great one. Uh, until next time, I'm Bob DeMarco saying for Jim Person working his magic behind the switcher. Don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear
hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.